Hello guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. This is the timetable of the live session for RBS Abhi and Nabat, and this is our mobile application which you can download from the Play Store. So let's quickly begin with the first question: Which state has launched the CM the Hesi portal? So here, guys, the right answer is Manipur. So Manipur CM N Biren Singh has launched this portal and it is basically a web portal that will help the public to connect with the CM directly to tell their complaints directly to the CM through the medium of this platform and many states have launched such platform so it is not a very new kind of a thing as well as not a very important news as of now okay it was just that it was in the news that's why i took it for the session the next question is which edition of the governing body of the international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture held in new delhi so basically the question is asking you that there was a session of the governing body of this treaty which took place in new delhi india and which edition of that session took place so here the right answer is option a ninth edition of the session took place in india there was a theme as well celebrating the guardians of top diversity towards an inclusive post 2020 global biodiversity framework so this is the theme of this session the next question is who is the author of muskurate chand lamhe aur kuch khamoshiyan book so here guys jivesh nandan is the author and why this book is special because bollywood actor manoj bajpai has or uh, released the book the next question is which country will host the 2022 conference on confidence building measures and interaction in asia summit so here the right answer is kazakhstan kazakhstan is going to host this conference on the confidence building measures and interaction in asia which is short form as cisa okay it is going to be conducted in the astana city now recently there was a news related to kazakhstan only that earlier the name of the capital of kazakhstan was nur sultan then it was changed to astana okay prior to this astana was the name of the capital then it was changed to nur sultan and now again it has been changed to astana so now the capital is named as astana apart from this one more uh, you can say amendment has taken place in kazakhstan and that is the presidential tenure has been increased to 7 years now that note you are going to tell me who is the current president of kazakhstan okay so prime minister narendra modi has also got an invitation to attend this conference which is again a uh, it is indicative of the soft power of india that the central asian country is focusing on india as well okay the next question is we care is the fixed deposit scheme of which bank so here guys uh, sbi is the right answer the uh, sbi has extended its we care fixed deposit scheme for the senior citizens till March thirty first, twenty twenty three. That is why it was in the news. The minimum tenure of this FD scheme is five years. The maximum is ten years. The interest rate is additional thirty basis points. That is zero point three percent additional will be given on the existing interest rate on FDs for the senior citizens. Okay, the senior citizens are already getting fifty basis points above the date that is given to the normal public. Okay, and over and above. This fifty percent, thirty percent will be given under this scheme. So a total eighty basis point difference is there in the normal interest rate and the interest rate in this we care fixed deposit scheme. Now you don't have to remember all this. This is just for your information. Okay, don't try to mug up this data. This is not essential for your exam. So here, guys, questions for the day have ended. now i have a special section for all of you that is news bulletin wherein we are going to look at certain news which are uh, crucial for our understanding 
Okay, so the very first news is that the Union Ministry of Power is planning to implement the market-based economic dispatch mechanism. Now, what is it? First of all, know this fact that electricity is in the concurrent list. So, it is a matter of the state as well as the center's legislation. Now, if this mechanism becomes a reality in India, then what is going to happen? All the power dispatch that is scheduled for one year, that power dispatch facility will be centralized. Okay, You can understand this point that in India, we have the national grid, we have the substations and we have the main station. Now, if this market-based economic dispatch system becomes a reality, then the control over the central system will be given to the central government or the agency which the government will appoint. So this is basically, uh, you can say, shifting from the decentralization, decentralized mode of power dispatch. However, not much information has been given on this mechanism, on this system. Therefore, we cannot comment on this as of now. How, the, what we can see is that it is a little bit of decentralizing. It is moving from the decentralization of the power uh, system. One more thing that it is in line with the governments. One nation, one grid, one frequency, one price formula. Okay, so that is the basic idea for scheduling of the annual electricity consumption for inter as well as intrastate. So clearly this is fetching the power of the center, state government. Now, what is your opinion on the system? I, I'm invite, inviting your opinions. Do provide me in the comment section below. What do you think about the system? Is it going to bring efficiency in the power distribution sector? Is it going to reduce the losses of the power distribution sector at the same time increasing the surveillance on the system? Or it is going to, you can say, debunk the federalism, the federal structure of India. So this is the question that I'm putting for all of you. Do try to provide your opinions in the comment section. The next news for us is the project Cheetah. Not the one under which the Cheetahs have been brought in India, but the project Cheetah of Indian Air Force. So Indian Air Force is also running a project Cheetah, which is very, very crucial. And under this project Cheetah, what Indian Air Force is trying to do, it will equip the drones the Heron drones which we have brought from Israel. So these drones will be equipped with missiles so that the drones can be used as weapons, not only the weapons of surveillance, but also the weapons of, uh, you can say, destruction. Okay, so that is the basic idea. Now, obviously, the equipment, the missile equipment and upgradation of these drones will be done in India. Therefore, it is a part of the Make in India project. One more thing. So we had began, the, uh, we had begun this news with the project Cheetah only, so why not discuss about it? So I hope all of you are aware that eight Cheetahs have come in India, out of which five are females and three are males, and the basic idea is to repopulate Cheetahs, which became extinct in 1952 itself. Okay, and one more thing about this project Cheetah, it is claimed to be world's first intercontinental large wild carnivore translocation project okay no need to uh, cram your mind with this big name because it is very understandable world's first intercontinental asia and africa were involved large wild car carnivore translocation project so very easy to understand one more thing that the project cheetah was introduced in 2008 to 9 okay and the cheetahs have been brought in india in 2022 so that is one more fact that you should be aware of. The third news is that China has cloned, has created the wild arctic wolves clone. And this is for the first time that a clone of an arctic wolf has been created by China. Now, why do uh, countries conduct the cloning? Because cloning is an expensive procedure. Then why do the countries conduct cloning? Before knowing the answer of this question, you need to know the process of cloning because that will also comprise your general awareness. And don't worry, I'm not going to cram you up with all the technical details. No, I'm just giving you a brief idea so that you have the general awareness about the cloning procedure and what is going on in the field of science and technology. So, guys, very basic 
टर्म्स में हम इसे समझेंगे सो इट इज द मेल ऑफ हुज क्लोन सॉरी हुज डीएनए वी हैव टू कॉपी बिकॉज we are going to create the dn genetically identical clone clone is what we are creating the genetically identical offspring so we are going to take his cells okay then there is one female from this female we are going to take eggs and from these eggs we are going to remove the dna uh and nucleus basically nucleus which contains the dna so that the dna of this female cannot be copied because we want the identical clone of this animal not this okay so then we are going to fuse these two uh these cells and this egg and this fusion will create an embryo and this embryo is going to be planted into the surrogate mother's womb and then we are going to have the cloned animal which is genetically identical to the donor why are we conducting such a thing when we have the option of natural breeding these two animals can breed because it's a male it's a female then why uh, do we need to take the pain of creating the clone in this manner the reason is that we do this because we want healthier clones okay the method this method ensures that the offspring is healthy and free of diseases that is the basic idea healthy ho efficient ho diseases na ho antibiotics uh, ka use na karna pade hormones acche ho these are some of the reasons because of which we undertake this expensive procedure of cloning okay and now this arctic wolf clone has been created by china okay so i hope that this much is clear moving on to the next question so we had celebrated international world snake bite awareness day now why this day is specifically important because last month union health minister announced that they are planning on to creating a national action plan for prevention of snake bites that is why it is very very important for you to know what is happening in india in relation to snake bite so this is the news that we are going to create a national program for tackling the snake bites but why suddenly do we need such a plan because the snake bite incidents have increased in india 58000 people die annually this is a huge number 58000 people die annually because of snake bite and 232000 people uh, have a disability because of the snake bite so this is a very huge burden on india due to the snake bites so india has 300 species more than 300 species of snake uh, snakes and uh, out of these 300 species about 60 are venomous so uh, if you separate these 60 from the 300 then 240 species of snakes are harmless but we have the four most venomous species in india and these are russell's viper indian cobra conum uh, common crate and saw scaled viper so these are the four major venomous snake species that india has snake bite is also a neglected tropical disease we celebrate world tropical disease day tropical uh, neglected tropical disease day when do we celebrate this day do tell in the comment section bill okay this day is going to come in the near future probably in the next year so i have given you a hint do tell me when do we celebrate the world neglected tropical diseases day the last news of the day is that that the death toll from the lassa fever has increased in nigeria to 177 okay now what is lassa fever you should be aware of that so lassa fever guys is an animal born zoonotic disease zoonotic diseases which are the diseases which spread from animals to humans so it spreads from the rat okay and it is endemic to the west africa okay so i have not put the map here but the, the map was there in the document okay so it is endemic to the west asia the area where like uh, liberia sierra leone and all these countries are located okay 
symptoms of the lassa fever initial symptoms are fever general weakness malaise later symptoms are headaches or throat not important for you to know it's just for your awareness that this kind of a fever is spreading and it is endemic to the region of west asia what is the treatment the treatment is this debevarin tablet or the antivirus drug now this drug is important for your knowledge that this drug is used for the treatment of uh, lassa fever which is endemic to the western asia now the most important point is it transferable so it is not transferable it is not human to human transferable unless the fluids are exchanged for example the blood is exchanged for example the spit is exchanged or the sexual activity has taken place until or unless that happens this disease is not uh, transferable okay the transmission does not take place in this disease so that was all for today i hope you have liked the session and if there is any kind of feedback you can provide it in the comment section thank you so much for watching the video